Funding for Overheard with Evan Smith is provided in part by Hilco Partners, Texas Government Affairs Consultancy, and its global healthcare consulting business unit, Hilco Health, and by the Matson McHale Foundation in support of public television, and also by MFI Foundation, improving the quality of life within our community, and also by the Alice Kleberg Reynolds Foundation. And viewers like you, thank you. I'm Evan Smith. He's the hipster historian, as comfortable editing Hunter S. Thompson's letters as Ronald Reagan's diaries. A professor at Rice University, he's an author as popular and critically acclaimed as he is prolific, with six New York Times notable books of the year and several bestsellers to his credit. His latest book is The Quiet World, Saving Alaska's Wilderness Kingdom, 1879 to 1960. He's Douglas Brinkley. This is Overheard. Is that a vote you'd like to have back now? Because you're a judge, or a justice in your case, doesn't mean that you're free of, of personal opinions about that. Do you have a dimmer view of him than you have of presidents past? So when they take your name in vain, you just laugh it off. For the larger issue, though, in your mind, is that it's not about whether there ought to be a death penalty, but whether the death penalty as administered is fair. Doug, good to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks thank, for having thank me. Thank you for being here. So the, uh, it's not a coincidence that this is the second book in a row with the word wilderness in the title. Well, that's right. A few years ago, I wrote the book called The Wilderness Warrior on Theodore Roosevelt, and it was really about uh, the birth of conservation in the United States, dealing with Gifford Pinchot and Forestry and John Muir. This is all ultimately at the second volume. It's called The Quiet World, Saving Alaska's Wilderness Kingdom. And I pick up with TR's presidency in, yep. uh, in places like the Tongass National Forest and take it all the way up to 1960 when President Dwight Eisenhower signed legislation creating what's called ANWR today, which yep. is the drill baby drill of Sarah Palin. This is the save baby save story. This is about how uh, since the 1870s, people have been fighting to save wild Alaska, these beautiful, pristine, uh, places and save the great species up there, ranging from polar bear to literally hundreds of different types of rare birds. You could have called it Save Baby Save. Hell, that I actually, know. As <laughs> a commercial thing, that would have been awesome. It may have been good, but the quiet world um, is, you know, we're, we're such a noisy and cluttered culture. And I, uh, the great writer, I grew up in Ohio, and Sherwood Anderson was my favorite writer, mm -hmm. and he once wrote about how Americans are forgetting the solitude and quiet, and it was very Thoreauian. Yeah. And uh, uh, Thoreau is one of my favorite people. And in and, uh, and this book, uh, there I have all sorts of wilderness heroes of Alaska, ranging from Walt uh, Disney, who saved the seals, yeah. to Aldo Leopold, who's a Sand County Almanac, turned on a generation, Rachel Carson, that was starting to warn about um, uh, chemicals in our environment. Yeah. And most importantly, William O. Douglas, the former Supreme, Supreme Court, Court Justice, Justice right. from Yakima, Washington, who walked the walk. He wrote a book called My Wilderness and studied the Brooks Range and came back and convinced people in government, Republican President Eisenhower, to save the Arctic refuge for future yeah. generations. Now, so I'm clear and we're clear on this. This is now imagined to be the second volume. Yes of a, a much larger series of books about the history of the conservation movement. I'm writing the third volume right now yeah. called Silent Spring Revolution, which deals with John Kennedy. Right. Goes as back President, to Rachel Carson. Rachel Carson, course, Stuart right. Udall, the important interior secretary. And you'll do seven books in total? Yeah, you? I'm going all the way through up till, I don't know the exact cutoff point now, but the one after that is a Texas book, because it's going to be about Lyndon and Lady Bird and beautification, conservation. Really? Yeah, that will be after oh, wow. the silence. And you intended this back when you did the TR book, that it would I be did. part of that? I the, did. The danger you have, this book flies on its own. Uh, yeah. My publisher, Harper Collins, gets nervous about multiple volumes because sometimes people will say, oh my gosh, I didn't get one. Why would I buy well, two? Well, this is so not exactly like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I mean, no. You're, you're doing... <laughs> it is. It's not linked that way, but they worry about things like that. It's a tough book yeah. marketplace, but um, I put a lot of narrative um, uh, research and writing. Yeah. I lived in Homer, Alaska with my wife and kids, we went up there. Now you were not the one who lived next door to Sarah Palin and no, got her we've mad, heard a right? lot of stories up there in Homer. So Homer's a great place. The, the idea that you wrote a book about Alaska that's not a book about Sarah Palin can be viewed as anti-commercial, actually. <laughs> but uh, sh sh did you ever get a chance to see her or talk to her in the no, course of the reporting? No, I saw Lisa Murkowski up there, um, and, uh, but I had not. She's really a very minor figure in Alaska. Uh, she's much larger. And maybe than, not just there. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> as, as it turns she's, out. Um, the only part that really affected this book was the, she would go aerial wolf hunting, if you recall, and it, it had been largely banned up there, and um, many people were breaking laws. They didn't want to give up the 
killing of wolves. And it was, I write a whole chapter about the story of wolves in Alaska, a man named Aldo, uh, Aldo Murray, who went to Mount McKinley and started saving the wolves. Because the outdoor person, many people thought they were just predators. They were like mange, something yep. you just got rid of. And it took this generation of people, a woman named Lewis Chrysler. She lived with wolves up in the Arctic and did a program with Disney and wrote a book called Arctic Wild to make people start seeing wolves in a little bit of a different light. Walt Disney in the 1950s, mm -hmm. True Life Adventures, did a lot to save desert ecosystems and the Arctic. Yeah, uh, Alaska doesn't seem like an obvious subject of a book. For one thing, the great majority of people you run into have never been there, will never be there, and almost forget. You know, yes, it's part of the United States, but it seems in the mind, at least, to be so remote. And it's, in fact, so physically remote that we, we almost take it for granted. Oh, and it's spectacular up yeah. there. Had uh, you been before you started oh, reporting? Many times. Yeah. I like outdoors and I like wilderness. And what happened was, by after when Theodore Roosevelt became president, he saved the rainforest and the Tongass and the Aleutians and the yeah. Yukon, and he put them all off. But it was the federal government controlling Alaska, and the extraction, big extraction industries hated it. So there's a constant war in Alaska between federal government, wilderness, protection, animal protection versus gold rushes, oil rushes, right. extraction. And it, it's, a, it's a clash. And uh, this is the story of a group of eccentrics, some of them who made it to high places in government, um, including um, Theodore Roosevelt and, um, and, and Dwight Eisenhower joined their ranks, too, of people that saw that we needed to save this for our children's children, that Mount McKinley is not just our tallest peak, but the whole Denali wilderness need mm -hmm. to be saved, that the <clears throat> Aleutians today, if you go out there, it's the most spectacular bird rookeries and seal rocks and walrus. And, and so we're trying to make sure as we're moving quickly into the 21st century that we save wild Alaska. And this is the story of the people that did it. We, it's a, it's a American triumphalist story that a lot of wild Alaska has been preserved, but it's always a near thing.